Greetings everybody, this is Leviathan here, and today I'm bringing you my Shadow Impale changed up build. So this is actually something I was working on for the last few days after the patch went live. Didn't get to do too much testing on Shadow Impale when uh, it was on PTR, it's mainly focused on Multishot there. But Shadow Impale has always kind of been my baby, for those of you that really know me well, you know like this is my favorite build in the entire game. So I wanted to see if there were any ways to improve what we already could do. I spent all of last season as a solo player doing nothing but uh, speed GRs with Shadow Impale. I want to see if maybe there's a way to tweak it to make it faster, at least find a comparable build, something that changes it up, makes it more fun to play. So I came up with this setup. Uh, first here we'll show you a video um, of just like an explanatory example of going through a GR100. This is Shadow Impale with all guilds here I'm showing you. It's basically, you know, Paragon 800-esque. My gear is really good. Like, I just happen to have really good Impale gear because it's like all I play. So, you know, it's still going to be probably a little bit further into your season when you have a setup like this put together. But at least I tried to take out some of the damage that I could and some of the defense as well from not having a ton of Paragon. But it is a search and destroy build for elites. All you're trying to do is go through the rifts as fast as possible and kill elites. That is your main target. That's it. Sometimes you'll see juicy trash, especially if your follower pulls them together if you're playing solo. And you might just want to uh, quickly impale that down, but for the most part, don't get caught up by trying to kill every little thing. Just use the power of having infinite vaults to go through the rift as fast as possible, get to that next elite pack. Uh, one of the things that I recommend is putting in tactical advantage, and that's something uh, I think softcore players will be able to enjoy a bit more, because I, I tend to say that you would swap that out for your cheat death for awareness if you're playing hardcore and we'll talk about uh all the skills and the different things in a further section um after we get done with the video here um there we picked up a shield pile on the thing to note about this clear in particular if you like what you see is that we don't actually get any impactful pylons for the setup we got a shield there and then later on i believe you get a channeling which essentially does nothing for this build because you don't really care about your resources it allows you to use your wolf a little bit more which you know is a dps boost so maybe there's that but otherwise cooldown or uh channeling pylon not really great for us and we are using flavor of time so we do want double pylons we want really good ones the best one to get first of course is speed because that'll give us more movement speed throughout the rift it'll also give us more attack speed and impel loves attack speed like it is the best one of the best stats for it so you can get those daggers out faster there's no resource cost to them if you're uh, impaling the same target over and over so it's it's amazing right and that's why we really want to see attack speed power is also really good for us too of course you just hit harder you one shot a lot of stuff um more so than you already are basically so you do want to see that happen um but yeah it's uh, still a very sturdy build you can see like you know the damage is good the damage coming in we're still mitigating very well you get a lot of healing out of uh shadow impale because you have so much um life per hit due to how shadow power works, especially if you can get some life after kill rolls on your gear as the secondaries. There's so many things to go over. I'm using lightning here as well too. It's my preferred element for speed farming with impale because it makes it a lot easier to maintain a full hatred. Whenever you're like say just rolling through the rift, right? And you shoot out an impale so that you can get those free vaults. Sometimes you might miss. Sometimes there might not be a target for you to hit. And so you'll start to lose hatred because you're not impaling anything. But then with uh, Lightning, with the Ricochet Rune for Impale, as soon as you hit a target, you're likely going to get a lot of Hatred back because the way that the Ricochets work is it also feeds into adding an Impale instance to an enemy. So it's basically telling the game that you've Impaled this enemy multiple times already, even if it's potentially your first time Impaling it. So it just allows you to get back to full Hatred very quickly, which is great because then that also refills your Akila Curus status and gets you back up, topped up. So that defensive bonus stays on. Um, there are some variations to this build. Uh, we can talk about some of the gems that you can potentially use. We can talk about some of the skills you could change up as well. Like I was mentioning the passive um, with the cheat death and such. So that was a 3 minute and 30 second clear basically. So not too shabby. Usually what happens with impale is that you go a little higher than you can with like multi-shot GR speed farming for instance but uh, the times will be a little bit slower. So you're kind of making that trade off of being able to go higher, maybe level up your gems higher, um, bring in the experience, but the runs will take a little bit more time. 
Um, as most of my builds uh, have now, there's this D fans, uh, Diablo fans written guide. So if you want that, it's in the video description below. Make sure you check that out. Also, some other helpful links there for you for season 18. Um, but this spells things out in a very visual way. It also gives you recommendations on the stats that you want to look for on gear, like attack speed, um, cooldown reduction. We'll talk about um, not using a Gogok, which I know a lot of people are like, what? That's Shadows Impale, like favorite gem. Um, and then just some other recommendations. A lot of things that I talk about right now in this video are discussed here in writing in case you like to read more than you like to listen. But I'll pop into the game like I did in the last couple videos because it just makes things a little easier to explain when I can actually look at all the powers and stuff. So let's start with the gear. It is your standard uh, six piece shadows. And for those of you that are unfamiliar with this, it just really powers up the impale skill for demon hunters. It really turns it into an insane single target skill. So the idea is that, like I said, you're going to be hunting out the elites because you are a single target monster and elites give you really good progression and there's, you know, usually one yellow or three blues or whatever. So that's what you're aiming for. And now we've included the All Guilds rework set. This is a crafted set that came in with a rework in 2.6.6. .6. To get this in the new season, you're going to have to go and do some bounties. Out of the bounty caches, you have a chance to get the new plans. Um, you can also get them from the Odious Collectors. Uh, but it's random, like there, you still could do a bunch of bounties, a bunch of caches, a bunch of odious collectors and not get it. So I saw some people being like, how do you get Captain Crimson in the last videos? Sometimes you do those things exactly as you're supposed to and you still don't get them. So just kind of keep at it if you don't get the plans. Um, so we have the all guild set and what this gives us now is a lot of elite damage. <laughs> the three piece set is an increased damage against elites by 30% and a reduced uh, damage from elites by 30%. So since we are seeking out elites, this is just trying to make it so that we super destroy them and they're not as deadly to us. And then the two piece set gives us generic increased damage and a uh, reduced damage. So just adding in a little bit more comfort um, and safety to the build and also damage increase. Like I mentioned, we do have a flavor of time too. It's gonna be really hard to get a good one of these. So, you know, good luck trying to get a good one in the season. Um, this just gives us the double pylon duration. And like I said, if you can get some influential ones early, then it really ramps up your Greater Rift. It'll take some of those maybe like three to four minute ones and speed them up even further to potentially get sub three minutes, which would be great. Um, I would like, And the video was an example of a GR100. I think that's pretty feasible early on. The thing that happens with uh, Shadow Impale is that you get a lot of damage early and then you need to catch your defense up to it. So you're going to want to make sure that you're addressing that everywhere that you can, you know, have your diamonds in gear, have your Killer Curious, have your Elusive Ring. Um, you're gonna get damage reduction now with all guilds being included as well. So it should hopefully start to feel a little more comfortable, but that definitely is a concern that people have had in the past. It's, you know, sometimes they feel a little too papery early on with Shadows. Keep that in mind. We are still keeping the Chain of Shadows belt in here. So like I mentioned, the Infinite Vaulting, this is what allows us to get through the rift so quickly and find those elites. Um, when we're not using the Endless Walk setup, since now we have Flavor of Time, we can actually still include both rings here, even though we have to use a Ring of World Grander in our cube. So that means we have a uh, Convention of Elements and Elusive Ring. And those are just, you know, obviously big DPS whenever you're on the Lightning Cycle of Convention of Elements, and then also a uh, big damage reduction whenever you have this active. And the thing to remember about Elusive Ring is you can activate it through vaulting, which you'll be doing a lot of, but also, say you have good positioning on an elite, you don't want to move, if you hit shadow power, it'll actually refresh the elusive ring um, power. So keep that in mind, a lot of people will usually just hit shadow power as soon as they enter rift and then forget about it, but if you want to stand still with the build um, and keep your elusive ring bonus, you can always hit shadow power for that. Um... I guess that's really it as far as the gear goes, you have the standard Carly's point and holy point shot, uh, it is really hard to get, like I was saying, a good Holy Point shot, a good um, flavor of time. And I do recommend Lightning, but you can still run this build with other elements. Like if you get Cold or Physical Gear, like whatever gear you get that's good, you can just go with that. It's just that you might ideally want to strive towards Lightning just for the reasons I mentioned previously on how it's a little easier to keep that hatred management uh, working with Lightning. But you can still run this with other elements too. So keep an eye, just keep an eye out for good gear in general, regardless of element. Um, the gems we'll discuss now, so Bane of the Trapped and Bane of the Powerful are standard. Those are just really good DPS gems, you're going to be killing elites, so Bane of the Powerful makes a lot of sense. Bane of the Trapped is just a really good DPS gem, we're in melee range, it activates itself, it's great. 
Uh, the third gem is the one that's really tasty here because you have a lot of options since we're not using Gogok. Because uh, Flavor of Time always comes with a CDR roll, that means we have an extra one. And what you can do with this is either just maintain Gogok as you usually do, and instead of having CDR on your shoulders like you often do, you can switch that over to like a life percent roll and just get more life in the build. However, if you keep your CDR roll on shoulders, have this one as well, then you just need one more CDR roll somewhere, which you can usually get on gloves or one of the rings. You can see here I have it on my convention. That means you're now at that nice 37% CDR on your sheet, and you have 100% uptime with Vengeance uh, when you have a Dawn in the Cube. So that's actually really exciting because now you have a free gem slot and there's so many good gems out there. I'm actually using Xy Stone of Vengeance here for the solo Greater Rifts because it's just a, it's the best DPS option. Even though you're not going to benefit from the full effects of it because you're not at range, like multi-shot would be for instance, it is still a new multiplier for your damage. So even at the minimum amount, you're still getting a nice multiplier. Other things to consider though, like I said, you could just keep Gogok and that would be fine. You get your attack speed and your cooldown back in there. In groups in particular, I think Pain Enhancer would actually be a really great option because now you're going to circumvent the loss of the attack speed that you would have with Gogok. And also your group will likely, if you have supports and stuff, tend to pull a lot of mobs together. And Pain Enhancer is the best when there's good density. Usually you don't create a lot of density as a solo uh, Shadow Impaler. So that's the reason why this is going to be particularly nice in groups. If you need defense in particular though, uh, definitely take Esoteric Alteration. It's probably one of the best defensive gems. So again, you know, maybe early on if you're feeling like your build's a little thin, maybe slot in that Esoteric. And then another consideration for grouping in particular is Bane of the Stricken. If it feels like you're going up a little higher for your group speeds, boss is taking a little longer to kill, you can consider throwing in a Bane of the Stricken and just uh, embracing that boss killer um, role that Shadow Impale is really good at, because it is kind of one of the things you've been maxed for uh, in groups later on as a Shadow Impale Demon Hunter. But you could even consider that since, again, you do have the free spot here. But maybe, for the most part, you're going with Zaz. As far as the skills go, I've touched on most of them already. Um, the Wolf is just a good DPS option, and it's group. It's a group buff, so in groups, it's actually pretty nice to keep that. Like I did mention, though, if you feel like you need the defense, especially solo, perhaps, then you can switch that over to Boar, which is just a really good defensive option. And even in groups, if you feel like your group is someone in your group's like, oh gosh, dude, we're dying, like I need help, you can always switch to Boar and it also provides defense for the group as well. Uh, impale Ricochet, standard, Impale, whatever rune you are uh, using for your element, it'll, it'll be what you use, but I like Lightning in particular. I have Vault Rattling Roll. Here I like it for solo because it just gives you a way to disrupt enemy attacks. It allows you to roll through enemies um, as you're getting towards the next elite to disrupt them. Uh, in group, you may want to switch to Tumble, just so that you're not CCing mobs, so that your monk or your barb or whoever you're playing with, if they're going to be pulling mobs, they'll have a lot of better opportunity to do so, since you won't be adding to the CC table of the mobs. So consider that as a swap, but otherwise probably just stick with Rattling Roll. Shadow Power, you can use whatever rune, because you get all of them from the Shadow Set. So you just go with whatever sweet color wings you want to have. What do I have right now? I have green, it's so exciting. <laughs> Uh, the defensive option here, Fan of Knives, Bladed Armor, that's pretty much a standard include. If you feel like you don't need this, you could switch it to something else, uh, especially in groups. When maybe you're feeling like your defense is fine, you could always go with Mark for Death. And I like Contagion. Uh, if you're speeding very quickly, then you just Contagion one like low health enemy, and then uh, the Mark for Death will spread. Uh, if things are taking a little bit longer to kill and you're getting like nice density pulls, you can always go Valley of Death instead. Um, but those are your options there for a little bit more offense. But otherwise, Fan of Knights is pretty standard. And then Vengeance Dark Heart, very, very standard. Uh, just a nice defensive uh, thing, and you'll have Vengeance up 100% of the time. As far as the passives go, like I mentioned, I love Awareness as a hardcore Demon Hunter, but you could always swap this to uh, Tactical Advantage just for more movement speed throughout the Great Rift. Uh, Numbing Trap's a really good defensive option, pretty much always include that. Ambush is a good DPS option, just to kind of get those faster kills on the elites right away. And same with Call of the Week, just another defensive multiplier to your build. And that's really it. I don't want this video to go too long, even though it did go a little longer, but there's a lot often to explain about Shadow Impale, and like I said, take a lot of pride in it. So again, if you have any questions, feel free to hop into the comments, check the video details for the written guide. If there's any updates, uh, those will go into the written build as well, unless I change it so much, I'll make a new video. Follow the stream, twitch.tv slash leviathan111. Big marathon stream coming up tomorrow, making this video right now Thursday. 
So season starting up tomorrow, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific in the Americas. I'm really excited for it. I hope you guys will join me. Come and check it out. 24-hour stream. Gonna be playing groups. Gonna start Demon Hunter. It's gonna be a blast. Um, and that's all I got for you guys. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you liked it, feel free to hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button because there's gonna be more content coming to the channel all season long as we uh, have more adventures. Enjoy, man. Just this, get hyped. It's gonna be sweet. There's so much going on. I think that we'll even have more discoveries as people get more time to play with this stuff. So until the next time, thanks again, and I'll see you in the next video. Adios.